We have today um, George Damara, who is a West Papua national, who is an activist and going to speak to us about the human rights crisis in West Papua. And then we also have Veronica Komen, and Veronica is a human rights lawyer. She's now with Amnesty International, and she's also an Indonesian national who um, has found herself in a spot of trouble, perhaps, on her um, exposing information and activism on the human rights crisis in West Papua as well. I would like to open in, uh, my short speech based on United Nations Universal Declaration for Human Rights contain the every man and woman have a right to live freely in their habitat land so they can practice their cultural identity, political ideology, religion, uh, etc. without subordinated by the any foreign nation. That is only beginning of that sub human rights uh, declaration. But also Indonesian opening chapter for the constitution of 1945, they didn't say that one, that's that uh, colonialism must be abolished because that is against or abuse the human right. Bahwa sesungguhnya kemerdekaan itu adalah hak segala bangsa, maka penjajahan di atas dunia ini harus dihapuskan sebab tidak sesuai dengan perih kemanusiaan dan perih keadilan dan sinonisian language. During the process for le the first president Sukarno who took over West Papua the request for 151 million dollars from you uh, are from Soviet Union to gain the backup military equipment during the 1961 operation. After that, American backup Netherlands so that no no fight. Successfully landing of uh, Indonesian military on the um, Mandala operation, and in 1961, the land of West Papua been annexed to the Indonesian uh, territory or archipelago of Nusantara. And then, rather than just finish off the third, Second World War, America pushed that to the normal against the Indonesian with the military operation. Otherwise, block or the West and East will be fight again. So, unsuccessfully, uh, our future independence been blow away, and then 1961 Indonesia beginning for uh, a native our homeland of West Papua, and the United Nations temporary administration in took part. On 1962, the New York Agreement, that it, this is the base of the international law, that uh, legal framework between Indonesia, Republic of Indonesia and Kingdom of Netherlands. So until today, Indonesians said, no, you guys already chose for followers of 1969. But this is 29th chapter of New York Agreement, Indonesia and Dutch, they never been give the chance for the people in, on the ground, the indigenous people, native people of Papua should be exercised. All this uh, New York Agreement, the article from 1 to 29 never been uh, exercised by the native people of West Papua. So I told my country fellows that even today we fight against Indonesia in any kind of way. They got built up in military equipment and everything inside there. End of the story is we lost because the New York Agreement must be refused through to the United Nations international law. So that is uh, the first legal system regarding, I mean, international law Indonesian use to continue to gain West Papua as part of Indonesia. So now we campaign. I just finished from uh, 
Brisbane to follow the human rights activists to campaign around six uh, military factory who created gun and sell it to Indonesia to kill the people right now in West Papua. So what we're going to do is we have to speak out more and more. Thank you so much for Veronica today with us. She's a wonderful woman and hopefully she will continue to speak out the right of West Papua people will never end the struggle anti West Papua independence. So at the moment, the people in West Papua, the United Nations last night when I saw the talk story about the West Papuans, the Melanesian race going to disappear in their home because of intermarriage assimilation. So that is political ideology from Indonesia to knock down, to be no more black people in West Papua, but mixed race, and maybe they forgot about the political ideology. Maybe they're going to be uh, Indonesian in our homeland, attracting many men and women to married again in the Indonesia way, in Java, because a lot of women in Java. I've been to Java a long time ago. So, that is a political catastrophe we face it at the moment, because they're killing people inside the, home, inside the jungle, in the central islands of West Papua, and then also they're doing uh, another way attractive men and women to be married to Indonesian men and women so that the our Melanesian race may disappear anytime. So we, we really are about all this uh, ideology, political ideology of Indonesia. The ecosystem, flora and fauna in West Papua also facing dilemma to run away from their beautiful sanctuary and looking for another place to live or because of illegal logging, mining, etc. On the sea, the fishermen from Indonesia, they came to West Papua. Maybe you know, I mean, uh, when I was detained in Port Augusta in South Australia because of visa, I've been a translator for the 700 Indonesian fishermen. I give them job. I told the uh, detention immigration uh, officer, give them job. They said, you activists from West Papua. I said, that I respect all these people. They got right. They are human. Not Indonesian government or Indonesian Britain. All this fish and other stuff there, no more fish, good fish in Indonesia or West Papua and water. Because thousands of fishermen looking for fish. Sometimes they're using homemade gar bomb to dynamite the fish and destroy beautiful coral reef. So if you go there before beautiful coral reef with the colorful fish around that, similar like a barrier reef, but at the moment, all the coral smash into pieces. So the the side of I mean the big population of Indonesia they now use West Papua as an objective land for make money and go back to their own. Uh, that's why sorry I that's why at the moment the people of West Papua they feel themselves self like a refugee on my homeland. So when you look at the street, not much West Papuan people walk on the street or the market side. What they want to sell, the Indonesian people or women, they sell all the stuff as well. So they are in the state of, uh, I mean, they have no way to go. <coughs> That's why I spoke to my country fellow. We are in Australia at the moment. If we came on, like I came to Papua New Guinea in 1984, until today I've never been there. 
the back to my home country. So I spoke to Veronica that what you've been saying, maybe it's fresh information to the community, international community because you've been experiencing all those stuff recently. And you came across to Australia. But for me, sometimes I went to Papua New Guinea, spoke to the refugees there, encouraged them that one day we're going to be free. So it's a reality faced by the West Papuan people in, in West Papua is uh, so unbelievable because Indonesia continue to threatening them with the military presence on the ground. If they make something mistake or the people around or living in the mining area or the places where uh, the freedom fighters been active and fighting between them and the Indonesian military, it's very really dangerous for any civilians walk across around the street during the night times. Uh, today, on oh, 24th, yesterday, that's uh, Indonesian arresting uh, some people in Soro, about 24 people, men and women and children who go with their mother to the police station and still there. And one of them, the active, one of the civilian, the man, been took away and disappeared and never come back. So this is a uh, big issue we have to, especially my country fellow, uh, like uh, Benny Wenda and others, uh, have to continue to speak out. So, because when we say that, Indonesia say like that. When we say that through Indonesia, always muck around. So, on this uh, state, on the fact, Indonesia will never want to solve the issue of West Papua through to the negotiation table. Because they have no way, they no argumentation, no legal argumentation to tell the United Nations that West Papua wrong and we are right. They right and we wrong. We are they wrong and we are right, but they always say no. And then they use the military power to continue to intimidate, torture and killing rape on the ground of West Papua until today. So I think uh, I a little bit finished for me and then I give time for it maybe everyone or someone want to uh, ask a question. After that maybe uh, Veronica can continue. So in Australia, when I was in uh, Ken uh, Brisbane, but when I was, my experience, I am the first West Papuan uh, refugee who took government of uh, John Howard to High Court in Canberra. And I won the case. Yeah. When I represented myself to the court, immigration said, you have to write the letter to Amanda Winston to allow you to read the 1958 Migration Act of Australia. So you can write your submission by yourself. But praise the Lord because nine o'clock night when I mean, took it from here to detention center that someone spoke to me like far away place but through to the telephone. Say you don't worry because you will be released but you have to be here for a little while. I'm a musician. When I arrived in Australia uh, in detention, Sunday morning only five people attending church. Service. But when I play the music the next Sunday, 150 people turn up. <laughs> so that is God's plan. So, nine, 43 people came across again with the canoe. No one go to the SBS or ABC for speak out about the right of the refugees. 
I'm the one who gives the YSBs give me the accommodation, plane ticket. I've been there talking about the right of the West Papuan refugees just 100 kilometers from Australia, 150 kilometers from Cape York. So West Papua, and then, sorry, last, one week ago, we meeting with uh, one of the local uh, Green um, uh, local member from Brisbane. We mentioned concern about the Lombok Treaty. I told, I told him that one of the crocodile in Northern Territory bite someone one day, only five minutes ABC television can expose the issue. What about 100 people of Australia and West Papua being killed there? Eh? And no one exposed the issue, only through to the Facebook. This is unbelievable. If you fret, you fret about Indonesia, give the gun for thousands of guns to West Papua people, and they can fight with Indonesian army. So, I leave it like that. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Veronica Koman. I'm Indonesian human rights lawyer in exile here because of my West Papua work. My pronouns are she, her. I am a Chinese ethnic minority from Indonesia. I am not a West Papua. Um, and before I start, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of, of um, uh, the land that I'm here, we are today, the people of Hidinji. And I'd like to pay respect to the elders past and present and acknowledge the, uh, the, the ongoing racism, colonization, dispossession. And um, because this is the same story of West Papua, basically. And um, so I'd like to start with um, uh, Isaac's presentation earlier about media. <coughs> so. All of you us here don't hear much about West Papua. It's because West Papua is one of the most restricted places on the earth. And this is like reflected by, you know, recognized by, by many uh, international NGOs and the UN. And um, so international journalists and organizations are practically banned from entering West Papua. And um, and the, the, the condition of local uh, uh, local journalists they are all often being subjected to intimidation and attacks. And uh, for the mainstream media based in Jakarta, the capital of Indonesia, are just very colonial and very lazy. They just copy pasted the press release by Indonesian authorities when something happened in West Papua, if any. You know, if, 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 if even even published at all, so that's the situation. That's why you are not hearing much at all, and like, um, it really works, right? It really works. It's really we don't know what's happening there, and that's why it's been my own personal mission to uh, to raise awareness about what's actually happening in West Papua, like in um, in, in Indonesian um, education system. We are brainwashed on uh, three main issues. The first one, that uh, the history of Timor Leste. Until today, most Indonesians will think that, oh, uh, look at the poor Timorese, they have become very poor since being uh, 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 separated from Indonesia. So, second biggest history is the, the, the crimes against humanity against the communists, back, uh, back in 1965. The, the, uh, one of the biggest um, uh, killings in history. And the third one was Papua. So in our history book, we were taught, Indonesian children were uh, taught that how heroic our founding fathers were liberating West Papuans from the Dutch. But apparently, after I hung out with uh, West Papuans for a while, I found out that precise moment was deemed by most West Papuans as the beginning of colonization and invasion. So, uh, that, uh, and that's why I am very, um, you know, uh, annoying for Indonesian. <laughs> because I have the uh, other version. 
Um, and um, so, uh, because Kaka George already uh, uh, explained about the, the history, I'll just go briefly to emphasize uh, the bit of history of why West Papua is also a fight for the land. So the land of Guinea, so I come from Sydney here, uh, so I've been uh, living uh, uh, on the land of Gadigal people of your nation, colonially known as Sydney. And uh, so I come here from Sydney, it's from Cairns to West Papua is closer to from Cairns to Sydney. Can you imagine that? It's so close yet we are hearing Fakol about West Papua. And it's uh, so the land of New, uh, the land of New Guinea is divided by imperial line at that time when all the imperial wars divide territories, so become Papua New Guinea and West Papua, and West Papua is further divided by colonial lines by Indonesia to divide and conquer, and I will go into more detail later because there's currently uh, uh, just this year. Uh, there has been a new uh, settler colonialism project in building more lines in, in colonial lines in West Papua. So um, and yeah, about the the, the the brief history. So in 1961, uh, West Papua already have their own uh, um, uh, and national anthem, national flag, national parliament. Two weeks later, the heroic Indonesia Liberty, aka invaded West Papua and um, in 1960 long story short that <laughs> 1962 there was an international agreement that later on Indonesia would oversee the the, the plebiscite one person one vote well it technically says one man one vote but I rephrase it one person one vote at that time uh, uh, to be conducted later on in 1967 Indonesia signed an agreement with the U.S. Freeport will have a Grassberg mine, the largest gold mine in the world, in West Papua. In 1969, the plebiscite took, took place. So it was promised uh, from the international treaty that one person, one vote. At that time, the population roughly 800,000 people, but the plebiscite only 1,026 people handpicked at under gunpoint to choose Indonesia. Of course, because two years before, Indonesia already promised the gold in West Papua to the U.S. And so this is why it's freaking hard to fight for West Papua because we are also fighting the U.S. It's also it's about imperial power in, in, in West Papua. And it's just Freeport. We are, um, I, I, can't, <laughs> I haven't even gone to, you know, the, the BP and like all the, uh, the, the new, new colonial uh, uh, corporations operating in West Papua and uh, so yeah that's why it's freaking hard <laughs> and um, yeah it comes with military operations and now I will go to the uh, uh, the now uh, the, the second part and the last part of my uh, 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 speech today uh, the now so uh, Indonesia so Initially, Indonesia divided the land of West Papua into two provinces and recently they added three more provinces. So during the, the uh, from, from the first division, the land into two, uh, in those 20 years, West Papuans have become minority in their own land. The, uh, there was at that time by dictator Suharto, there was official uh, settler, settler colonial, colonialism project like people uh, Indonesians were put in uh, West Papua and then you know all the story and uh, recently it's been added three more and so it will uh, this new administration new provinces means new money will attract more migrants to come more settlers to come and in establishing new province it means new police headquarters, it means new military headquarters, it means new government um, uh, offices which will attract more um, uh, public servants for, uh, uh, because uh, classic impact of colonization that uh, you know, people are marginalized and uh, uh, the, the low level, the deliberate level low of education 
um, you when in Papua you can think of any statistic, the worst will be West Papua. The lowest uh, rate of education, the highest rate of uh, uh, maternal uh, maternity deaths, uh, uh, and like the, the the highest case of high high HIV AIDS, and like name it name it. The worst will be you will find it in West Papua. It's deliberate uh, colonization, and um, what up, sorry, <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah. So yeah, it will. So the the, the new settlers will marginalize. We will marginalize a West Papuans like Kaka just mentioned earlier, where the the small uh, West Papuan mother, small traders, uh, they they sell the the classic uh, beetle nuts, uh, and like for example the beetle nuts or the cassava, and now these settlers with the capitals and more uh, I guess business literate, uh, they are also selling the same things. Uh, that was was um, uh, Kaka George was referring to. So like in all aspects, like if you go to West Papua, if you can, <laughs> because it is technically you know you if you're a foreigner, it's uh, a no-go zone. And um, so once you arrive in West Papua in the airport, you will see that all those uh, uh, standing behind the desk at the airport are settlers. And when you go outside the airport. In the parking in the parking area or the quarter, then you will see the indigenous park ones, and um, uh, and so yeah, so marginalized like that, and um, yeah, so well besides um, by dividing the land into more provinces, it will it's classic divide and conquer, making the the park one leaders officials fighting each other for the new money, and um, also it's to make. The licensing for all the the plundering of our resources are even easier. And uh, yeah, so and now the worst human uh, uh, currently there's worst humanitarian crisis in West Papua since dictator Suharto era is happening right now in West Papua. More than sixty thousand people are displaced in the forest, and they are um, uh, live in hunger, in cold. And uh, uh, those who live, who, who stay near enough in the town, are often harassed by Indonesian authorities because they are uh, stigmatized as part of the freedom fighters. So um, yeah, they are. So the last, the situation is so uh, desperate that um, the the local, uh, the uh, the more literate, uh, I mean, advocacy literate people among the displaced people have stopped. Counting their deaths because they said that um, uh, why 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 do we need to make a documentation like nothing changed uh, not, nothing changed why do we have to keep doing this we don't have to anymore so the last available data was uh, from early last year the deaths were uh, already 421 and it happens since December uh, 2018. Um, uh, which uh, where the, the fresh uh, military operation uh, from Indonesia happened since uh, December 2018. And I was thinking like, uh, so because it was throughout two years, more than 400 people died, including uh, most of them are children, like no one bat, bat an eyelid because it's like, you know, slowly, but let's say if it's like one in single one single incident, let's say Santa Cruz massacre in in, in East Timor, Timor Leste, then does it what it took? Uh, you know, does it what it needs to finally Australians to to open your eyes and start speaking up about this? Does it what it takes? Uh, but you know, it's just the, the situation is is very uh, desperate, and um, the uh, about uh, I'll touch a little bit about how the the situation in West Papua is. Uh, the West Papua National Liberation Army is the one of the oldest national liberation armies in the world, and they are still continuing uh, their fight under today since the 1960s until now. And um, yeah, uh, right now they are this fresh uh, the, the the 2018 one that I mentioned that this uh, liberation army has has been uh, has become stronger than ever more popular among our West Papua and many of them are child soldiers. So the recent attack um, 
uh, it was led, uh, the, the commander was only 18 when he conducted the attack in 2018. And traditionally speaking, according to their custom, you cannot lead people older than you. So you can imagine, like so many young people, and like right now, every now and then, the Liberation Army publish, uh, publish uh, their uh, photos or videos. I can always spot at least two children. And this is by no means to white standards, what inter international law is what instrument. Uh, uh, according to white standards, like, oh, these, you know, child, child soldiers are bad. Yes, I don't uh, disagree with that, but it has to be put on context when you're looking at the situation in West Papua. Like, this, uh, uh, so many of these new child soldiers are from the neglected, displaced people. They can't go anywhere. They can't go to school. If they try to cross the, the town, the soldiers will ask, are you part of freedom fighters? So they, they join the Liberation Army instead because they have nowhere to go. And they feel safer with the real Liberation Army. And so this is one of the, the situations. And the other situation is also like um, uh, being a child of freedom fighters. If you go to school, the uh, Indonesian soldiers will come to the uh, school and keep harassing, asking where are your parents, like, like what are your parents doing, etc. And um, so it's, it's very complicated. It's very complicated, and um, but yeah, it's all it's you know a, a really concerning because like the last time I checked the UN Secretary General report on the situation of child soldiers in the world, West Papua is not under their UN radar yet. While you know I you know thousands of them right now, I believe, and um, uh, the, the quickly about uh, racism. It's uh, so. As a Chinese ethnic minority, I've been discriminated against all my whole life, but the racism towards West Papua in Indonesia is like another whole new level. Uh, it's, um, uh, so West Papua students in Java are often, uh, they, 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 it's very hard for them to find even accommodation to live because of their dark skin. And when they go to public transport, they are often like uh, Indonesians will move their seats and like pinching their nose and like uh, are very racist and, uh, and even uh, call them monkey. That's what triggered the 2019 West Papua uprising because Indonesian soldiers called them monkeys. Uh, and like uh, in the recent uh, uh, mass arrest as well, uh, unknown people left uh, bananas in front of West Papua students dormitory. So that kind of uh, dehumanizing uh, racism and the situation of freedom of expression, of course, very bad. That um, uh, most of the time, West Papuans, when they took to this, uh, take to the streets, they will get mass arrested. In Indonesia, when Indonesians take to the street in police brutality, that also happened because police have bought bastards everywhere. But um, uh, you can see the layer of racism because when Indonesians uh, in protest, uh, only few of them that deemed as provocators are being arrested but when it was Papua, all of them got arrested so i'm used to you know advocating for mass arrest like that because like just no no west papa you can't you cannot speak at all just you know go down and um and uh my last point is that i want to uh reiterate uh, so i want to emphasize how west papua is also climate justice issue it is the, the biggest um, uh, rainforest in the Pacific right now, I believe. And uh, through uh, Indonesia's colonization, the, it's the highest rate of deforestation right now. And of course, like I just mentioned, illegal logging right now, we have found on plantations, everything. So if you want to save the lungs of the world, we must save West Papua. Thank you.